Hi, I'm Scott and welcome back to my shop. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Wedge Pro. It's a segmenting sled made by Mike Pearson. Alright, so is this the easiest way to cut segments for wood turning? Let's keep watching and find out. I'm over here at the table saw because that's where we're going to be doing most of the work here today. Um, uh, for full disclosure on this video, uh, Mike Pearson sent me this Wedge Pro um, segmenting jig for free. Okay, but I'm going to give it my honest assessment. Um, I told Mike, uh, yeah, I'm going to give him an honest review. Um, I'm going to go through the instructions and set it up as if I had no clue about anything about segmenting. So, you know, if you're new to segmenting and you buy this jig, I really wanted to have that be your experience watching the video. Okay, so with that said, um, I got the package here on the table saw. And um, yeah, let's uh, take it out of the box. Now, before I get started, I already took it out of the box, okay? So I put it all back in the box and I just removed all the packing peanuts because there was a mess. Okay, lots of packing peanuts. Um, uh, Mike was great. Uh, he used the recyclable or the biodegradable packing peanuts, so that's very, very cool. Um, but uh, yeah, still packing peanuts, a mess, right? So I got rid of them all so we didn't have to deal with it. So this is what you get in the box, okay? So first we have this um, T-shaped item, and this is an alignment jig, okay? So we'll talk more about this in a bit. All right, we have a material stop. All right, and that's very cool. It's got this roller on it, so you can do some thin ripping of material. That's a, um, a pretty cool feature. Um, you got a couple of push sticks, okay? So that's very cool. And uh, he's got a little logo on here, so, but a push stick. And then a, another variation of a push stick. All right, so that's very cool. All right, here's your miter bar. This is what rides in the, the groove of your table saw, okay, and keeps everything aligned. And here we got the uh, the Wedge Pro itself. All right, let's get this out of the box and let's get the box out of the way. All right, so I'll pick that up later. All right. So, but here's the Wedge Pro. All right, here, let's get that up. Oh, almost dumped that out. Got a little uh, Allen screw. Okay, so let me check the video. There we go, very cool. So here's the Wedge Pro. All right, that's what it comes, um, you got two handles. All right, you got a front and a rear handle. Uh, you got this little spring clamp, and that's being held in place by a block of uh, Corian. All right, this whole thing's made out of Corian. It's very cool, uh, pretty durable, um, and you got this block. Uh, normally, when you get yours, all right, printed on this block will be some QR codes. One will take you to Mike's setup video, so you can watch the setup video so you're familiar with it before you start. The other one will take you to um, written instructions, okay? So mine didn't have the QR codes on it. Um, you know, I got like an earlier version before he was doing that. Um, so I just went to the website and I printed out the instructions, okay? And make sure that, yeah, I think that's the, that's the right side up, right? So I printed out the instructions. So I'll be following the instructions as we go, all right? And um, as we set this, uh, this whole thing up. In setting up this sled, Mike's included this uh, setup jig, um, you know, to make sure that you can get your um, the sled itself, you know, perpendicular to the um, um, the saw blade. So that's really important. So um, on the back side of this, you can see this is a uh, I'm going to ride in the miter slot. Right, and this is actually beveled on each side, so it's self-centering. So that's really cool. All right, so it should fit in there and center itself, so you won't have to worry about that. And you can see I got no wiggle room at all, right or left. Okay, so I did have a little bit of play up and down here, but that's what these little screws are for. Right here, let me back this one all the way out. Right, so you can see it's just barely, just barely a little bit of play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that play out and I'm just going to adjust these screws just to take that play out just a little bit. Oh, 
Okay, you can see I'm not getting any rocking anymore and it's still tight in the groove, okay? So that's what you're going for. You want this to stay tight. If you, if you raise these screws too much, the front end will start to pull out a little bit and you'll get a little bit of side to side. You don't want that. You want that to stay in there rock solid and you don't want this to rock, okay? So that's what we got and then what we're gonna do is raise the blade and just we're gonna trim that, okay? So that's gonna give us a, an area where we know that that blade is in relation to the miter slot. Okay, so after we have this thing adjusted and it's riding, you know, firmly in the slot and you got no play right and left, okay? Um, we're gonna have to trim that off. Uh, trim this end off, you know, with the blade. So I raised up the blade. It says to raise it up in the instructions. It says to raise the saw blade up about three quarters of an inch. And then we're just gonna push this slowly through the blade just to trim it, okay? Um, you got to make sure that your blade is 90 degrees um, perpendicular to your tabletop, okay, um, for this to work. So um, you got to make sure that your stall set up properly, right? You want the blade to be parallel with your miter slots, and you want the blade to be perpendicular to the tabletop. So to make sure the table's square, I'm going to use a uh, digital angle gauge, okay, um, and make sure that we get the saw set to 90 degrees um, perpendicular to the tabletop. Okay, and I've already set um, my saw up, obviously, so the blade's um, um, parallel with the, um, the miter slots. All right, so let me get my safety glasses on, and let's trim the end of the setup jig. Okay, that is easy enough. Okay, got a little piece off, right? And that's, you know, this um, setup jig will, you know, it will, you're gonna custom cut this to fit your table saw because the, the, you know, the miter slots are not exactly in the same place in every saw. Okay, so the next step is to prep the sled. So we're gonna move this setup guide out of the way, lower the blade, and then we're gonna get the sled up here in the table saw. Okay, so here we are with the, the actual sled itself on the table saw okay got the blade lowered so it's out of the way all right and let's just take a look at what we have okay so first we have this um a miter bar and this is going to have to be adjusted to fit perfectly in the miter slot and we'll talk about that in a minute because that's actually going to be this, uh, the first step that we do um but let's take a look at the rest of um, um this piece right we have a little clamp here all right and that's going to actually hold your wood strips up against the fence and if i lift this up Right, you should be able to see right here, okay? Right here, you can see there's um, sandpaper pre-installed on the fence, okay? So that's awesome, right? Because you don't want those strips to slip at all. Um, if you look down here, you can see the number of segments um, um, that you can cut, all right? So we're gonna go down from six, all right? Um, the least amount of segments that you can cut up to 72 and a whole bunch of variations in between and it's just by adjusting this pin Okay, you loosen this knob and you just make sure that the fence is resting between there's two pins here Okay, you got to make sure it rests between those two pins um, And then you tighten the knob down and then it's set up the right angle to cut the number of segments that's listed here Okay, um, this piece right here is a sweeper. All right, now I'm gonna have to take that off. All right, because that just gets installed on a later step. Okay, but this sweeper is actually gonna move the parts out of the way of the blade after you cut them. So that's kind of cool, right? All right, so I moved the sled out of the way. I, I removed the sweeper and put it aside. So the first step is to adjust the miter bar so it fits tight in your miter slot, all right? We want it to be able to slide in the slot, okay? We want it to have no side-to-side -side movement at all, but we want it to fit in there and move freely, okay? So just a little bit tight for me. Actually, it's probably perfect, to be honest. So this is going to be fine for me, okay? But if you needed to make an adjustment, you can see here, Okay, there's some nylon grub screws that are inside, there's one and one, right, that are inside that are adjustable from the other side. So you would just take a small, flat um, screwdriver and you would then adjust those 
grub screws just to take out any play that you would have with the miter bar as it slides in the slot. Now, if your miter bar is too big, right, and won't even fit in the slot at all, even with the grub screws adjusted all the way back out, all right, you can actually trim, trim down the miter bar, okay? And when you trim down the miter bar, let's take a look over here, yep, okay, so if you trim down the miter bar, just make sure that you trim it on the side, okay, um, where you would insert the screwdriver to adjust the screw, okay? You don't want to tr trim away um, your um, grub screws, okay, because that just make them, you know, shorter, and you can see there's a little bit of room here um, that you could trim away some of the miter bar if need be, okay? So now that we have that adjusted properly, the next step would be would be to install this and then use the setup guide to make sure that the sled itself is square to the blade. All right, so I've taken the screws out of the miter bar and you know, the, this metal hardware, okay? And your hardware may uh, be a little bit different. I know Mike has switched up these screws to, um, you know, a different type. But these are the ones I have, so these are the ones I'm going to use. And I have the miter bar under... And I'm lining this up so the holes in the miter bar line up with the slots, okay? And then I'm just going to loosely attach these screws. Okay, so here you can see I have the, you know, the screws in place, but I, this is loose, right? And I'm going to need that um, little bit of looseness as the, for an adjustment. Okay, so now I'm going to take my setup guide and I'm going to put that back in the miter slot. Okay, now I know this is where my blade cuts. All right, and on the um, on the sled itself, there's a little notch. Okay, and that's about where your saw blade should be cutting through this sled. Okay, so the idea here is to line that up with the edge. I've lined that up with the edge, okay, and then I'll be able to tighten down the screws that attach the miter bar. When we tighten these screws down, we got to make sure that this gap stays exactly the way it is, or the lack of gap, I guess I should say, right? We want no gap at all. We want the sled to be perfectly butted up against this setup guide you know, with no space at all, and that way we'll know that the sled is square to the blade. Okay, I have this, uh, I'm tightened down as a uh, as tight as I feel comfortable. I mean, I don't want to strip anything out, right? And it's very secure at this point, right? So you can see I have no gap at all in this seam. Let me make sure that you can actually see that on the video. Yeah, you can. So I have no gap between the sled and the setup guide. And I have the edge of this little cutout right here on the edge, okay, of the setup guide, you know, the part that we had cut away. Okay, so now this, the sled itself is set up and we can cut the zero clearance slot in the sled using our table saw. I've moved the setup guide out, okay, and we're gonna keep that, you know, just in case we need it um, at some other point in the future, right? And it actually says to do that, right? Okay, so set the setup guide aside, but do not discard as it may be needed in the future. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to hang on to that, all right? And now, what we're going to do is, is we're going to cut through, okay, the, the base of the sled, okay? All the way through, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to keep our hand on the handles, all right? So we don't want to get our hands anywhere near the blade, right? And if you keep your hand on the handles, all right? they'll be forced to stay away from the blade. So once again, um, safety first, right? So, okay, so the directions. Raise the blade um, two and a half inches 
and then cut that zero clearance slot all the way through the sled. All right, so we're gonna raise the blade two and a half inches and cut through the sled. Man, I really just don't like the smell of plastic uh, when you cut it on the saw, right? And yes, I did. I used a little dust brush to clean off the tabletop um, um, so it wasn't covered with snow, right? I mean, little uh, white sawdust from cutting through this plastic. So, but that was simple enough, right? So now we have this slot cut through, like a zero clearance slot cut through the Wedge Pro uh, sled itself, okay? Now there's one step left is to install this sweeper. Okay, you can see this sled is really kind of set up for either right or left-handed operation, depending on, you know, how you want it, right? Um, I'm right-handed. I like everything over here being on the left side of the blade. Um, but you can see they have two different spots where you can install the sweeper, and the right spot, or the correct spot for you to install it, is away from you. All right, so that's where it's going to go for me. Obviously, if I had the saw turned around and I was doing it on this side, it would go in the other slot, okay? So I just removed the sweeper. It came installed here, okay, on the sled. So I removed the screw, okay, and I'm going to take it. And you can see it's actually got like a little key. All right, so you really can't screw this up, right? So we're gonna put that in place. All right, I'm gonna drop the screw in and just tighten that by hand. I'm just going to use this wrench. Now, if you have a driver that's this size, it will probably make this a lot easier or quicker. But I'm going to use what the, I've got. I'm just going to make sure that that's nice and square and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? I mean, it's just going to sweep the pieces out of the way. I'm going to give that a little bit of a tighten. Okay, and now the sweeper is installed. And you can see as you cut the pieces, they're gonna fall into this area. And then when you draw the sled back, it will actually pull your segments back to you away from the blade. So that's pretty ingenious, right? Now that the Wedge Pro is all set up and ready to go, okay, the next thing is to set up the material stop. Okay, so the material stop is, you know, it's got a miter bar, okay, and it's gonna have two knobs on here and that's gonna tighten it down. And you see we have some adjustment screws and then there's also this knob here so you can actually adjust, you know, the material stop itself for, you know, the length of the segments that you're gonna be cutting. Okay, so here you can see we have the material stop in the, you know, opposite miter slot. Okay, and you know, all the screws are loose, right? Everything needs to just be tightened up and adjusted. I'm gonna loosen this up just a bit more. But you can see, here's how we're gonna adjust our segment size, all right? And these two knobs here are gonna lock the material stop into the miter slot itself, okay? But we have to set this up for the miter sled, okay? Or the Wedge Pro sled. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move this all the way to the end, okay, and push this um, adjustment arm in as far as I can go, all right, and, and we'll see why that is in just a minute, but let's just tighten that down so it does not move, okay, and then I'm going to take this and kind of put it in the middle, all right, and I'm going to lock these two knobs down so it doesn't move in the slot. All right, so now really the only adjustment is going to be these two screws. All right, and the directions say to just line that up on the edge. Okay, and you can see that's lined up right on the edge. Okay, and it, it, it just kind of made sense to me if you wanted to verify, you know, you could just raise the blade up, you know, with the saw off, right? And just make sure that it's just barely touching, you know, the tooth on the saw blade, you know, as it comes through, okay? 
if there's any gap between the tooth on the saw blade and here, it's not exactly right. It's not that it's going to make, you know, a huge ton of difference. All right. Um, but you want that to be, you know, as accurate as you possibly can. And then once you have that, you know, as accurate as you can get it. All right. We're going to tighten down these screws or bolts. Okay. And then we'll be all set. Okay, so now we have the Wedge Pro all set up and ready to go. All right, so I found some scrap wood and I cut some test strips and now it's time to try cutting our first segmented ring. So let's give it a try. You can see here that I have the uh, the pin here set for um, 12 segments, right? And I've locked down the fence, all right? And I have my uh, scrap test strip um, set up against the fence and uh, we're ready to go. Um, I have it just sticking out just enough so it'll cut that first angle and not leave a lot of waste, okay? You ever ready to fire up the saw and take that first cut? <laughs> Okay, so I made that first cut and I trued up the edge here so we're at the right angle. And uh, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it on this overhead shot, but I, I kind of made a squiggly line with um, um, pencil on the top of this strip. I also have a, a straight line on one of the edges and that's just some good practice for um, so when you locate the segments. So we'll talk about that a little bit later you know, when you put them together to make your ring. So, but here you can see I got the initial cut done. So I'm gonna take the strip and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna push it up against the material stop, just gently. And I'm gonna release the clamp to hold everything in place. And now the wood's right up against the um, sandpaper, you know, covered fence. Okay, and at the, we're at for 12 segments. So we're gonna cut 12 segments. I'm actually probably gonna cut a couple more. And uh, so you can see how this, um, this sled works. So let's fire up the table saw and let's cut our segments. Okay, here you can see I cut, you know, I cut 14 segments. I know I only need 12, but you know, in case I screwed something up, right? So the next step would be to take some sandpaper and um, I'm just gonna put it down on the flat of the table. And I'm just gonna knock these fuzzy edges off from the saw. You know, all this fuzziness could definitely, uh, you know, make it so the segments don't fit together properly, okay? Okay, so here we have our 12 segments. All right, and it's really hard to see. I guess I sanded a little bit too much of the surface. Um, but yeah, so there's a pencil line on the surface. Um, and what you basically, or what I'm gonna basically do is to account for any um, irregularity in my saw blade being perfectly you know, at 90 degrees to the tabletop. I used a Wixi digital angle gauge uh, to dial that in as best I could, right? But even if it's just a hair um, off, there might just be um, um, just a little bit of irregularity. But if you alternate 
what was the top of that board so every other one is basically facing down right um, you know one you know they're basically one up one down right um, those angles will cancel each other out and you'll basically have a segment that fits together perfect so let me go through this and line these up and get these in the right order um, and then uh, we'll come back in just a bit Okay, so I got the ring all um, put together, and I only kind of just put, you know, pushed it together with my hands, right? So, um, um, and, and you can see all the joints are uh, uh, spot on, right? Very, very good, uh, very tight. Um, yeah, so uh, the next step here, now that I got everything to line up, um, would be to glue this ring up and then uh you know use it in a project but like and this was just a test ring so i would say you know the wedge pro um a success uh very easy to set up very easy to use uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it okay so there you have it the wedge pro segmenting sled by mike pearson uh yeah it should be a link for Mike's website popping up down here somewhere. Also a link in the description so you can check it out. So, you know, the video, it took you from unboxing, right? Um, um, all through the setup, which was very simple, right? Very, very simple. And then, you know, it's pretty simple to use this device once you have it all set up. Um, the segments come out spot on. Um, you saw the test ring that we did. It just, you know, 100% perfect. Um, um, very, very cool. Yeah, if you're interested, check the description, check out the, you know, the Wedge Pro sled, you know, from Mike Pearson. Very cool piece of kit. If you need any information um, or any more information on segmenting in general, you can check out my other two videos on segmenting. Those are the ones where I got together with my friend Jim Wadham, and I will have links to those videos also in the description. Um, um, check them out. They'll just give you an overview um, on how segmenting works in general. And, uh, um, and I guess that's going to be it for, uh, for this one. Uh, next video, the 7-inch bowl kit that uh, Mike Pearson sent along with, um, um, with the sled. Right? The kit comes with everything. All the wood comes with the clamps comes with you know a spec sheet cut list so you know you'll be able to cut all the segments glue them up and make your first segmented bowl um, if you're interested you can also check that out at mike's website if you like the video please hit the like button please subscribe to the channel um, share the video with your friends if you have a question or comment just leave me um the question or comment in the comment section and um, I try to answer every comment. If it's a question about the Wedge Pro and I can't answer it, I'll reach out to Mike Pearson and we'll get your question answered. So that's going to be it for this one. And I will see you next time in Scott's Mini Woodshop. Have a great day.